have another speaker from this space, the space of cars, mobility, and how this is changing. It's Peter Skillman, who is the VP of design for HERE. Now, HERE is a company you may not have heard about. It's part of Nokia, and it used to be Navtech. It's the company that has all the location information that is used by BMW or Garmin, Toyota, you, lots of companies. So it's a company that is really feeling where you know, things are going when it comes to databases and uh, car services. Peter is actually uh, a designer, and we all know designers are the coolest people on the planet. He has lots of patents uh, to his name for portable latching hooks, smartphone keyboards, and you know, he's been in Silicon Valley for a long time building all these little things that now are the new normal. And we're really interested to hear how he sees the future of mobility. Please welcome Peter Skillman. And my remote control is? <laughs> she stole it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. So connectivity is fundamentally transforming the car industry right now. And it's not about recreating the smartphone experience in the car. It's really about how we deliver a completely new experience and it's something that we here are working on and thinking about a lot. And the internet in the car is at a pretty early stage. It's actually a little bit messy. It was only, if, uh, I mean, for some of us in the room who've been around, remember when the internet came and then the mobile freed us uh, from the desktop and now we're putting the internet on our toasters and our thermostats in uh, all our devices and including our cars. And today there's about 23 million cars on the road, globally connected to the internet. And that's out of about uh, approximately, waiting for the next slide to change. There we go. Out of about uh, 152 million cars in 2020. So this will take some time. And what's really happening is how the mobile industry is actually beginning to trigger a lot of change in what, what's happening in uh, in the car. So at the moment, cars are catching up. And it's a little messy, and I actually want to explain how it's actually played out. So there's actually uh, four layers in any operating system. This is effectively how an operating system is structured. At the bottom layer, you have the kernel, and the kernel talks to memory, CPU, drivers for chipsets, that sort of thing. The next layer up, is the middleware. And the middleware is where you have networking and security and, and uh, media frameworks. The next layer up from there is the user experience layer. This is where you have UI libraries, window managers, and all your applications. And then finally, that wireless connection to the cloud includes my account, uh, this cloud data, and hopefully an application store of some kind, and every OEM, they actually want to control that information. Now, the tricky part here is that every single operating system is different. Car makers are experimenting with QNX and Windows CE and iPhone, iPlay, and then uh, or the uh, open Android uh, Automotive Alliance for the car from Google. Um, there's uh, Genevi. And then you have the context of all the phones, uh, including uh, iOS and Android and Windows Phone, that are all, again, are using different libraries for all this information. So it makes it very difficult to talk unless you create an abstraction layer that makes it a little simpler. And what happens as a result of this not making sense is you have people going through ridiculous lengths to bring their mobile equipment directly into the car. So this is a rather expensive car with an inbuilt uh, display for navigation. And this taxi driver in Helsinki actually brought his own uh, Android device. And watch how uh, incredibly direct and simple this experience is. I'd like uh, audio, please, on the video. Uh, what he said was, and, and I have... Now, uh, now there you go. 
So what he said was Calistaya Torpa, Helsinki, that's a location for a hotel. And with one button press, he got the route. One button press, he goes direct. So in absolute minimum amount of input. A lot of this is about just getting rid of the friction. And what he did is, of course, glue this janky uh, magnet on the uh, HVAC system and a plate on the back of his uh, tablet. So this is what people are willing to do to get access to, effectively, their content because they want their content in the car. And this drives really unsafe behavior because people end up uh, text. How many people uh, uh, own a car and, and, and drive one? Okay, keep your hands up for a second. How many of those people, uh, keep your hands up if you have texted while you were driving in the last month? So I saw maybe 20% of the hands go down. So it turns out that cars are really optimized for driving, but they're not optimized for managing playlists and texting and everything else that you do when you bring this technology into the car. So we, for example, we have a lab. This is a sim user experiences out in the central uh, uh, navigation screen, and actually we find out what works and what doesn't and what's dangerous. So. What strategy analytics did is they actually took this data from the U.S. Department of Transportation and learned that if you text message on a cell phone, your risk of having an accident is 23 times. If you are dialing a cell phone, almost six times. And if you're putting on lipstick or makeup, uh, almost four and a half times increased risk of, of crashing. So this is actually really important in terms of how you manage the technologies coming into the car. So. My belief is there's three things that will really make a difference. Design, location, and the third is love. Now, what does love have to do in a presentation about connectivity in the car? Well, we care, we, we, we desire to be loved as human beings. We desire to love and be loved. And we want to be in touch with somebody who's in sync with our moods and knows who we are and knows our patterns, etc. And so... People also love their smartphones. And in, in the movie Her, the main actor actually uh, falls in love with the operating system. And we actually give our phones names and we have incredibly deep relationships with our personal technologies. Well, there's about 518 million smartphones uh, in use. And then in the MEA uh, uh, in, in Europe, um, in Middle East, Africa, etc., uh, averages four and a half uh, devices per person. So the numbers are actually pretty high. And 80% of teenagers in the United States sleep with their mobile phones. 80%. 22% of men in a Spike TV survey recently said that their phone is the most important thing they take with them in the bedroom. Now that's a little scary if you think about it, but uh, I can accept that. And why are they doing this? It's because the phone is a reflection of your personality. It has your content and each phone is entirely unique and different. That's why uh, uh, Android, Home, modifications, different layers, different ways of showing home are so popular in the App Store. So people love their cars too. And they actually give their, how many people have names for their cars? Anybody have a name for their car? What's the name for your car? Babe. Babe. So uh, the last time I talked on this subject, somebody had said that their Mercedes uh, Benz was named the Black Slug, which is a little weird. Um, so, so then, uh, but they don't have this kind of intense relationship with their car system like you do on your phone. They have their relationship with the car, but not the car system. So we're going to make you, again, fall in love with your car system. And how the heck are we going to do that? Well, what's going to help us fall in love? And it turns out there's a set of principles uh, that I've used throughout my career. I've designed four mobile operating systems and, and led WebOS, uh, you may know, and Mego and uh, all the mo uh, Nokia mobile phones or earlier in my career. And what I've learned is a few things that you can apply universally across this uh, space. The first is it's really important that it's personal. You need your content, it's your behavior, your accounts, and the more that you can incorporate your content in the car, the more personal it's going to be. The second is pure. What you remove is more important than what you put in. This applies to how you handle features, how you handle graphic design. You need to be incredibly clear about what's there so what's left becomes actually more important. The third, 
is beautiful essentials. You make what you do every day really excellent and focus on those core use cases so that 1,000 of those little details in aggregate, it actually becomes really differentiating. You don't always need the crazy hoverboard magical solution. You just need to get the essentials right. That's really important. So uh, the third is more emotion is better than less. And let's make sure we have the, uh, the volume uh, kicked up for this. So uh, listen to this clip. <laughs> Now, why is that so... <laughs> so, why is that so funny? Why, why is it such a terrific manipulator of the brain's dopamine system? Angry Birds actually is structured to create that sticky experience because it's got emotional content. There's a nuance. It grabs you and you don't know exactly what's going to happen, right? So, every time you pull it back, there's a little bit of uh, change. So, if I summarize like I talked about uh, love, I talked about design, now I'm going to talk about location and I, I'm going to start with Ribeiro in 1543 uh, uh, pen this map. He was a cartographer, Spanish cartographer and he was working for the Spanish crown and Portugal and Spain had separated the whole world into north and south and um, and what he discovered is that he actually moved the Spice Islands into the Spanish half. That really helped uh, Spain, even though it was a lie. So it was in first example of politics manipulating geography. And then this next map is what's happening today is the map has become a social object. And in this context, you see the map described entirely by the social uh, uh, connections that you have between people. So location has fundamentally changed cartography. And what we at here are thinking about is how that we believe location combined with powerful sensors and predictive analytics is going to fundamentally transform what the car experience is about. And so we actually create a three-dimensional point cloud and build a complete 3D digital model of the world that's tied to a reverse geocoded 2D map so that you can create clickable buildings that have addresses attached with them. And we create that using almost 300 different attributes to 20 centimeter accuracy so that you can take this ground truth and actually build a highly autonomous or highly intelligent vehicles that can drive on their own. You need that data. So that capture layer is the first part of the, uh, the string. The next thing you need to do is you need to make it seamless. It means that when I do a search on the web or on my phone, when I get into the car, that search needs to be there so I can get the direction with one click rather than re-entering that information directly in the car. That's about why it's so critical for these systems to talk to each other. And then finally, Immersion is a key part of this. It's not just about when you're in the car, but it's when you get out of the car. So how many people have had this experience? They're looking in the map, they're walking directions, they're trying to find a restaurant, and they follow their map, and then they look at the little green dot, and then they realize the green dot's going the other way, right? And then you gotta turn around, and then actually, okay, now I know I'm going in the right direction. So what we're trying to do, like for example here, is when you've been out of bender and drinking and you have no idea where your car is. So actually you can hold up and use augmented reality so the real world becomes the interface. And in this context, you can actually point until you can find your car. It actually becomes a point of interest. That's something we're shipping today on, on Windows Phone. And it's predictive analytics in the 30 billion probes that we capture every single month that allow you to actually predict when a new road is being opened up or if you tie that predictive analytics, that probe point, that GPS location to an accelerometer in the car. If you go over a, uh, uh, a pothole, then you can actually predict that pothole and warn the person behind you. So a lot of this is about safety. And you can uh, take... A predict that radius of curvature in the centripetal acceleration and then apply your own driving history to it so you can actually predict how fast you should be going into the turn. And if you're going too fast, you can be warned 
or the system can automatically brake for you. So again, here's what it looks like when it's actually applied to the road. So you get a warning, you can see how fast you're going, you come into that turn a little hot, you start in this uh, 3D view, and then the view rotates as you enter the turn into uh, orthographic view. And then with that orthographic view, you know exactly where you are, what that turn looks like, so that you can build a safer, more predicted, predictable machine uh, experience. So uh, reinventing the car experience is about these things. Love, personal, pure, emotion, essentials, and location. But you can also, like, industries reinvent themselves. Uh, you, you look at, like, this example in what's happening with, with Nest. Here's somebody that's completely reimagined uh, an experience of, the, of uh, a door. So this is security, but is it, uh, I'm trying to run the video. I'm, I'll click one more time. Maybe you guys in the back can run this. Is it stuck? Here we go. So here's a, an entirely new way to look at entries, right? So every industry can be transformed, and that's just an example of that. So love, design, and location can transform this experience, and it's about the connected car plus what you do, your content, all of those enablers, connected navigation, location-based services, and intelligent driving, and that location cloud will, will, will really deliver a great experience for you. And ultimately, all of this will enable autonomous driving. And autonomous driving, most people, 88% in a uh, uh, Harris TV poll, basically said that no way are they comfortable with the idea of a car driving me around. And it may be a while before you're taking a nap in the back, but highly intelligent driving really means that you can actually reduce the amount of fuel you're using, you can platoon, you can actually be safer, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're like sleeping while it's going on. And we believe that the assets that we're creating, that ground truth, and one really critical human element is going to make a difference. And that's effectively how... Next slide, please. about how we make cars act more human. The, the, the thesis of what I'm talking about here today is that the more that we have the, our, our automobiles behave like us, drive like us, corner like us, as we begin to d deliver more autonomous experiences, the more that those experiences will feel natural and human and something that we can adopt at scale and ultimately all of these elements are really about driving safety and not just minimizing the number of accidents, but using those predictive analytics, ground truth, sensor data, the map, location, to eliminate accidents. And ultimately, what's not to love about that? Thank you very much.